Hello, it says uh, Friday's devotion. We're late today for personal reasons, but we're here. And so um, we're going to read Galatians 1, 18 through 24. After three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown in person to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only were hearing it said, He who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. So this is uh, after Paul's conversion. He's telling the story to the Galatians. And he's, um, he talks about how he was converted uh, when Jesus appeared to him. He went away, he says, to Arabia and then back to Damascus. And then three years later, he went to Jerusalem to visit Peter. Now, one of Peter's other names is Cephas. Peter is actually a nickname that Jesus gave him. Um, Cephas is Aramaic. Uh, at any rate, he saw Cephas, he saw James, the Lord's brother, and then he went to, back to Syria and Cilicia, so uh, Antioch and Tarsus, up, up there where he's been hanging out. Um, and, he, and, and no one in Judea knew what he looked like in person. Now remember, people in those days didn't have the internet, of course. They didn't have TV. They didn't know what someone looked like. So um, you had to rely on other clues. And in Paul's case, the only clue they have is that he who used to persecute Christians is now preaching the faith. So they were happy about that, and they glorified God because of that, but they didn't, they'd never seen him in person. They didn't know what he looked like, what he was like. Um, it's interesting that he says he saw none of the other apostles except James, and then he says, and it's in parentheses in, in this Bible, and what I'm writing to you, I don't lie. I'm not lying. So uh, there apparently was some discussion about when Paul had been where and, and who he'd met, and that he'd, um, but, but he's trying to set the record straight for the Galatians anyway. Um, Cilicia is an area of Turkey, that's kind of on the eastern end of Turkey and um, probably abuts uh, Syria. So he, he was just in that area. Um, and this is after three years. So he's been a Christian now for some, um, some time, but he goes up to Jerusalem, visits with Peter and James, um, and then he goes back up to, uh, to Antioch. Um, and we'll see in chapter 2 that 14 years later, he goes back to Jerusalem. And um, and in that case, he's in a, in a little bit of a different situation. It's, I think that's after his first missionary journey, as we call him. So, um, so here is uh, Paul. He's had this conversion experience. He's a new man, a new person. He's changed. He's very different. But the people have to meet him and experience him and be sure, okay, this change is for real. He's not making this up. He's not, there's no game going on. He's not, it's not some ploy to see who's a Christian. And so um, he, uh, he, he has to go and, and visit them in person and persuade them. Yes, I'm both, you know, I'm, I'm for real. I really am a Christian, um, a believer in Jesus. So um, for us, what does that mean? Well, I think our faith has to be authentic, uh, you know, and we have to have a, a, a real faith. Um, I had a friend in college who, who's a devout Christian, but kind of quiet about it. And uh, he used to complain about what he called people of, uh, Christians with these face-splitting grins, you know, who were always grinning about everything. And he, he just, he found them shallow and, and um, he didn't like to hang around with them um, too much. And, and so he didn't. 
Um, but I always remember that that expression, the face splitting grin, because sometimes we put on these grins like yeah, everything's great, and it's not great, and we know it's not great, but we don't want to tell anybody about our problems or our stuff or our temptations or our, you know, what gets us going. We don't want to do any of that, and I don't know. Maybe we should be more authentic. Uh, someone said once. The church ought to be a place where I can come to worship and scream. Well, we never let her scream, but we understood what she meant. And sometimes we do just want to scream. So if you come to church and you just need to scream, go ahead. Nobody's going to, no one, no one will die from it. Okay. Well, have a great Friday, what's left of the rest of it. And we will see you tomorrow morning.